weaknesses and, and, and these things that they're trying to yoke you with again. Why is that becoming so, more, so much more important now than the spirit that delivered you? But if ye bite, you see what he's saying? He's still talking about the ones that cause trouble. If you bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed. You're gonna, the church is going to be consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh, walk in the spirit. Well, listen to him. Walk in the spirit. If you walk in the spirit, you won't do the things that the flesh is dictating. Watch this here. Watch this here now. He's not talking about your flesh because your flesh doesn't dictate anything. Watch this here. Walk in the spirit. You not fulfill the lust of flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. He's saying... There is among you those who's walking after the flesh. You need to walk after the spirit. But as long as there are people in there that's walking after the flesh, you got some in the church walking after the law, which is of the flesh, and you got some that's walking after the spirit. These two are contrary to one another. And notice what he said. That's why you can't do the things so that ye cannot do the things that you would do. The church can't move forward. The church can't go forward because you got some walking after the flesh, some walking after the spirit, and they, the ones that's walking after the spirit is troubling the ones that's walking after, I'm sorry, ones that's walking after the flesh is troubling the ones that's walking after the spirit, causing them to question their own salvation, question whether they need to go back to the law or not. He said, you need to walk after the spirit and stop trying to fulfill that stuff that's in the flesh. All that, that when they bring in the law, you, that's the flesh. If you walk after the spirit, you've already fulfilled the law. I tell them. He's saying, and these are contrary to the other. That's why he keeps saying, he said about four times, those that trouble you, they're, they're, they're walking after the flesh. Some walking after the spirit. The church can't do what it should be doing. The church can't move forward because you got two spirits warring in the same church. You got two. You got some that want to go back to Judaism. Some that are saying that that that's because you have Jews in there mixed up with the Gentiles. Amen. They all got saved. Now the Jews want to hold on to the to the law at salvation. You you see. That that's what Peter was. Want to hold on to the law, do this in the law. You got to be circumcised. Notice that's what he was talking about. They got to go. Glory to God. He said, now how in the world? Mm-hmm. So in scripture, flesh is not always your fleshy body. Right. Because flesh is can mean anything that's not inspired of God. Not inspired a of God. fault can be flesh. Right, right. So, right. so, I mean, is that what he's talking about, or is he talking about the, the human body, flesh? Because I can have a fleshy thought. Right. So flesh don't always mean the human body. No. Every no. time you see it in scripture. No, it does not. Definitely. Flesh. Wait a minute. What you asking me now? Wait a minute. Let's back. What did you just ask? Say that again. This flesh, is this in this scripture talking about the human flesh? Or are there times, because when I think of flesh, mm -hmm. like sometimes it's it can be a thought. Mm -hmm. It ain't necessarily got to be my human body. I see flesh as anything that's not right. That's true. That's true. It's that's fleshy. very true. Anything that's not inspired by him. Because if it's not inspired by God, then it, it is something that's inspired by Satan. There's only you. two entities. Or, or you. Yeah. Doesn't have to be Satan. Okay. Could be you. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, the influence was, was mm -hmm. because it's of the world. 
okay. the thought is, is of the world, and it's selfish. Mm. It's selfishness. Which makes it fleshy. Which makes it fleshy. Okay. What, what, he's, what he's trying to say is your flesh does not war against your spirit. It never happen. Because if that happened, you are not delivered. That's not what we're saying here. That's why I keep it in the context that, that, that is written. And he's talking about those who are walking after the flesh. Yeah, he's talking about two different sets of people here. And that's why you can't see, because this is what is okay. If he's talking about my body, warring against my spirit, then I'm back in Romans 7. I'm right, I'm right, I'm not delivered. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not delivered. If, if, if he's talking about, so, so now here I am a saint, and I've got my foot war against my spirit, the Holy Ghost, because that's a, that's a capital S. He's talking about the Holy Ghost. So flesh is warring against the Holy Spirit here. That's what he's saying. That's what, that's what theologians are saying. That's not what the scripture is saying, though. The scripture gives you the subject matter. The scripture continues, he says about four times, those who trouble you. He labels the, the flesh. That's what he's talking about. He those who are walking after the flesh, they are the ones troubling after the spirit. And he's saying, as long as these two factions are in the same place, walk with one another, you can't do what you would do. The things that you would do, you can't do them because you're fighting among yourself. You don't even know, glory to God, you, you, you refuse now, you, you got saved. With, that's why he said, who done bewitched you? Who's bewitching you? Do you, you, you understand what I'm saying? There's, a, there's some external, there's an external, um, influence. The thing that is persuading you is of the flesh, not of your flesh. That's what I'm. That's the point I'm to make. It's of the flesh, is but it's the flesh of other people. It's people that's walking in the flesh. They're trying to in this for come from God. It doesn't come from your spirit. This persuasion comes from those who are in the flesh. Those who have not received. So the flesh is going to war against the spirit. You get together. You get a husband and wife, one ain't, one ain't say that spirit going to war, war in the same house. That's exactly what he's saying. He's saying, here's of the flesh, and this one is of the spirit, and they're going to war with each other. See, because he can't contradict himself now and say, your flesh, because God's seed remain in your flesh, not sin. You're not going to wipe that out of the scriptures. So he's, and that's why he keeps saying four times here, those that trouble you, I wish they were cut off. What he's saying, they need to die. That's what he's saying. He's saying they need to die. Yeah. <laughs> so Paul was like, oh. He said, he said I, I could even wish that they were cut off. They walking in the flesh. And the flesh going to war against the spirit. So how are you going to accomplish the things of God, when you are now listening to the flesh here. You listening to the flesh. Who done bewitch you? They're not agreeing. And they're trying to walk together. You can't walk together because you don't. You, and, and you need to get rid of them. That's what he's saying. You need to get rid of them because you act like you done went crazy. You gone crazy. And you know you started out in the spirit. That's what he says in the beginning. Then you, you started in the spirit. Now, how do you get all the way back over here to the flesh? Right, that's what he's saying. You got that? In the same chapter, that's why he give the list of the works of the flesh. Exactly. And then to get a list of the works of the spirit. Right. Showing you that so you can identify what is what. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then he sums it up. He said, but, and, and, um, and uh, he said, but the fruit, I mean, then he said, down in the 25th, he said, if we live, live. in the spirit, mm -hmm. let us also what? Walk in the spirit. Right. Right. So you can say that he can be talking about two different people. It, it, right. And not only that, too, mm. let me let me let me give Tanya the benefit of the mm. doubt here as well, right. because because I can I can be saved and walk after the flesh. I can that, there I can be saved and walk after the flesh. And he's and if I walk after the flesh, that's contrary to my spirit. But that's not my spirit. Warring against me. That's me choosing. It, it, see, what I think the point that I'm trying to make here is that your body is not going to rise up against you on its own. No, I'm choosing now to walk after the flesh, and that's contrary to the spirit that's in me. It's just like if a man decides to go over here and commit fornication. Same thing. He's choosing to join the members of Christ to a harlot. Right? He's choosing to do that. And that's contrary to what he is. Because he's now sinning against his own body. Right? Y'all got that? So now to, to, you're right if you say, even if this, in this scripture, if you say now, if I'm, even though I'm saved, and that's what Paul is really saying too. I'm saved, but now I'm listening to, I've been influenced by people that's walking in the flesh and now I'm taking on that mindset. And that's contrary to what I am. That's contrary to the new creature. I'm, that's contrary. I'm walking after the flesh. I'm saved, but I'm walking after the flesh. That's contrary. I can't even do what I'm supposed to do because I'm, I'm born of the spirit, but I'm walking after the flesh. You can be saved and do that. So, that, so if you teach that that way, you're still right. You're right. You understand what I'm saying? But that doesn't mean now that my body on its own just got some evil something in it and it's rising up. No, that means I'm choosing to take on another persuasion. That's what he's saying. I'm choosing to take on another persuasion. I've been influenced by people that's walking after the flesh, and now I'm walking after the flesh. And that's contrary to, to what I am. I've been born again, but I'm walking like a sinner. You know, ever know people that do that? And he said, that's contrary. You can't even do what you're supposed to do because you're walking after the flesh now. Even though you're born again, you're still walking after the flesh. That's, that's, that's a, uh, I think that would even be a more perfect revelation of that scripture. But, he, but you can't o omit the fact that he's also talking about people that, that are persuading you. Those that trouble you, those, that, that's where that influence is coming from. It's, also, it's coming from outside influence. And now, who done persuaded you? You act like you bewitched. You born in the spirit, but now you want to walk after the flesh. What power did the, did the law have in the beginning? The law couldn't save you. Now you got the Holy Ghost. You know you got the Holy Ghost, and now you're going to go back to the law. He said, if you walk after the flesh, that's contrary to what you really are. But that does not say that your flesh rising up against you. That says you making a decision to walk after the flesh. Who you yield your members to, that's who you become captive. Amen. You, you become servants. Yes. All right. My time is up. At choice. Always a choice. It's always a choice. Because if it's not a choice, God didn't deliver you. And if it's not a choice, God cannot demand that your body remain blameless. He cannot give you that commandment. But he's saying that because he lives in the flesh, the flesh will never sin against you. It cannot sin against you. You can sin against it. Remember he said when a man joined himself to the harlot, he joined the members of Christ to a harlot. But what did he say? He's sinning against his own body. He's sinning against his own body. So you can't, that body is not sinning against you. You sinning against it. Do you understand what I'm saying? You sinning against the body of Christ. 
The body is not sinning against you. You can't say, oh, I, this body got so much lust in it. I can't, can't get rid of the lust. Yes, you can. You, the only way the body started lusting is because of your thinking. You created the lust. If any man is tempted now, he's drawn away by his own lust. And when lust is conceived, it brings forth what? Sin. Bring forth sin. And sin brings forth death. Amen? Praise the Lord. Clap your hand tell him thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Pastor Thomas. I love you guys. I hope y'all learning. I hope you learning. Glory to God. All right. Come on, let's give God praise. It was awesome. So that was all the questions everybody had. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> all right. Amen. We want to thank everybody for being here tonight. We're going to get ready to receive offering. Amen. Those of you online, Amen. Prepare to give your offering as well. Click on donations and follow the promptings. Online church, if you didn't pay your tithe Sunday, you can pay them tonight. Amen. You can pay your partnership dues, your reformation pledges. Amen. You can do that all by simply clicking on donations and follow the promptings. If you're visiting with us for the first time and you'd like to sow into the ministry, please feel free to do so that we can continue to bring you these live broadcasts. Amen. Those of you in the sanctuary, saints, raise your hand for your tithe and love offering envelopes. It's Wednesday night. Amen. It's the third. That means the first of the month again. That means bills are due. <laughs> both in your house and God's house. Amen. So <laughs> we need everybody to, amen, give tonight. Young people, pay your tithe. Amen. Give a generous love offering. Make certain that every envelope has a name, a first and a last name, please. Print your first and last names on your envelopes, even if children are giving. We need envelopes, every envelope to have a first and a last name on it. And uh, put the amount you're giving next to the donation name. Amen. Hospitation's on the floor if you still need an envelope. Who's wrong with it? <laughs> Amen. Yes, you can see Pastor Annette in the back uh, to give by way of credit card or debit card. You can see Pastor Annette in the back at the broadcast booth. Amen. Write all checks out to BTI. It all checks out to BTI, and Pastor Annette has the uh, credit cards. Amen. Saints, are we learning? This is an awesome lesson. <laughs> awesome teaching. I mean, to really see, really peep into the mind of God. Wow. Nothing like that. <clears throat> see his purpose yes 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 that's right yeah and and that that does bring perspective to know his intent amen to know his intent all right raise your hand if you still I think she needs an envelope here Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this service tonight. We want to thank you for the word and the clarity of your word. Thank you for revealing your eternal purpose. We thank you for wanting us to know you and your truth, Lord. And Father, as we prepare to give tonight, we give knowing that you're our Father, you're our God, and you're the one who takes care of all of our needs. And we want to thank you for job, having jobs and having a place to stay and for all the things that you have given to us. You have taken care of us. You've looked out for us. And we thank you for that. And we bring now a portion of the funds that you've allowed us to go out and work for. We bring them into your house. And we ask that our offering would be received, Lord. 
in Jesus' name. We thank you and we honor you with our monies. In Christ's name, amen. All right. Are we ready to give? We're going to ask everyone to stand.